Okay, we, uh, we're going to demonstrate a bonded insert on a Frisay style carpeting. Uh, this is nylon uh, fibers. And um, um, we're going to get started here. Uh, first thing we want to do is just notice that we have a damaged area. And um, we're going to go ahead and remove this. Always make sure that you have very sharp instruments to work with. Uh, get your scissors sharpened regularly and also make sure that you start out with a brand new blade on your knife. So we're going to make, make sure that we're following a row here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and make a new row. Okay, nice and clean. Go ahead and find a row here. Clean. And then we're going to find it here, right across there, just like that. So we're going to go ahead and finish this up. Make your scissors and just Make sure we have that complete. All right. So the damaged area is removed. And we really don't want to mess with these fibers too much. Get what is absolutely loose off of there. But don't really touch that edge. Uh, because right now those fibers have absolutely no protection. And uh, we should have... Uh, we'll have a video about why those need protection and uh, we'll be seeing that as well so we just want to make sure that we're grabbing anything that's in our way there okay very nice now we have our donor piece of carpet same style so we're gonna get kind of a rough idea of this get this cut out This is out of our donor piece. Okay. Okay, so now we try and be very careful about the edge again until we find that we get it in here. Just a little bit trimmed off. Okay, now we're going to begin to go ahead and, and fit that in here. And you be very careful that we do not trap these edge face fibers in between there while we're doing this. And, uh, we can even just kind of scoot them around a little bit, whatever we need to do. But we just don't want... Let's trim that down just a bit. Okay, very nice. Very nice, okay. So we're just going to take a smidge off of there by eye. Very nice. Not trapping the face fibers. We need to run that a little more. So we will. Now 
Now this is called the dry fit. And what this is going to do is just make sure that we've got this absolutely trimmed to the best of our ability, making this as invisible as it can be. And now for the final cut, we let our duck bills give us a guide. And we remove the excess of the donor piece, making sure we don't trap those face fibers. And then we just do our fine cutting. As so, and you can see the dry fit can look very good. And the dry fit is going to tell you what the rest of it, what it's going to look like when we're done. Okay, a little more. Trim right there. Make sure that we're not trapping any face fibers. Okay, very good. Okay, so now we have a dry fit, and that is just to that is to make sure when we once we set this, it's permanent. So we have a pretty good dry fit. So we're going to bring that out of there. And what I usually will do is I will turn that and mark with a carpenter's pencil on the back towards some landmark, in this case the wall behind me or in front of me, just so that I do not allow that to become turned around and therefore not fit. Now, now that we have our dry fit, complete the next step is very important we are going to seal our seam edges and that, that is both in the void and in the bonded insert this is a very important step it makes certain that these fibers, your face fibers that are right there, aren't going to fall out when traffic walks across them. So we have to do this step. Uh, even, even good installers sometimes skip this step because, uh, well, who knows? But uh, we don't skip that around here. So we're going to let that dry for a moment. We're going to go ahead and uh, apply this to the donor piece as well. And this is a fast drying uh, latex based adhesive. There is also available uh, solvent based. Uh, this is actually a fast drying, so I, I, I actually like this one really well. But uh, you still need to give it about 10 minutes to properly cure before you go about. Okay, so we just set that, set that down. And uh, we're going to take a, a break here. And we'll be able to uh, be able to put this all together in uh, in about 10 minutes. So we're going to take a break. Okay. Uh, so our seam sealer has uh, had about 10 or 12 minutes to go ahead and uh, begin to set. So we're going to gently put the donor piece in here. 
typically I'll use a pair of hemostats to just kind of guide those face fibers okay excellent now I'll make sure those don't get trapped we also don't want any adhesive on them either okay nice fit so we're going to go ahead and get our seam tape uh, what I use is uh, is known as K40 that uh, seems to be my favorite um, you guys can figure out what you like after you uh, get some testing done uh, this is definitely my favorite now there's a, a red line right down the middle and that just is indicating the middle of the seam tape and you want your you want your repair you want about half of your seam tape on the existing carpet the other half into your repair and you see we've got that pretty close there and we won't even need these small pieces if it was a bigger uh, repair we would use these small pieces to cut in where there would be a void but there uh, there is none so again we're gonna carefully place our donor in making sure we're not trapping face fibers or getting adhesive anywhere that it doesn't have to be okay very nice now I use a, uh, a steam iron and a wet towel for uh, for mine other guys there's uh, other things out there there's a cool glide that are awesome I've had some experiences with them they're uh, very very good this is uh, this is the way that we did it before before the cool glide was ever around um, now with your steam iron you want to have this towel dripping wet and you want your steam iron set on the lowest temperature that will produce steam Typically, that's going to be your polyester setting, but just check your iron. There's always some sort of an indicator uh, as to which temperatures produce steam. Now, um, we want to let this sit approximately 30, 45 seconds uh, for this tall fiber carpet like this. For say style, by definition, has... 10 to 12 twists per yarn uh, per face yarn so uh, that's uh, you know some length there so uh, what we do is we uh, give that time to make sure that that silicone on my seam tape is melting properly and I think that's about right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this iron around so that I cover maximum area and while I'm waiting the 30 to 45 seconds I'm going to pull this area up and just gently roll that with the tractor we want to uh, we want to help this to all meld together very well and that tractor in a real gentle motion slight pressure is going to help that now um, one of the big rules for running a hot seam is any seam but uh, particularly a hot seam do not over roll um, you roll it a few times gentle pressure and then you leave it alone uh, over rolling will make your seam look much worse than what you could have done if you would have not overrolled it okay so we're approaching 30 seconds on uh, on this side oh 
Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the iron completely. And we're going to gently roll the tractor over the entire repair. Different directions, light. Okay. Now don't do a lot of heavy rubbing over your repair just yet. What you want to do now is gently rub the fibers and uh, as uh, Barry Costa would tell you if you ever took a class from him or ever will uh, he'll say you give it a little haircut and this is what we're doing here we want to make sure that we uh, fool the eye as much as possible that uh, and you're uh, a good trimming of your fibers after a bonded insert such as this is going to more effectively hide what you have had to do here okay Now it's starting to cool down so we can put a little bit more of a, a motion on our rubbing. And we just want to make sure that we get all the little fibers that are uneven because this was a separate part of the same roll of carpet. We uh, got this piece from the piece that we made the practice board from. Okay, and there we have it. One very good looking repair. I'm going to trim just a little bit of nonsense out of there. Okay, now this is uh, as a final touch. What I like to do because we have seen, uh, uh, we've seen that. Uh, it's it's been dried now for a little while uh, what I like to do is I will take a few fibers from the very middle and I just prove that that's all one piece that is all in there and I'm tinning that up pretty good so so that is proof positive that that patch is not going anywhere that bonded insert pardon me I've I've been doing this long enough that we did used to, uh, uh, in the trade, we used to call these uh, plugs or patches. Um, we find that we get a better response out of folks uh, calling them what they are. This is a uh, permanent section of your carpet or a bonded insert, something that's going to be a permanent repair and is going to be in my company guaranteed for the every minute that this carpet is on the customer's floor this repair will look good if it ever comes up in a vacuum if any fibers start coming out to where it looks bad uh, we will redo it thank you so much